International Secret Police. Ceiling Zero. Ceiling Zero. Ceiling Zero. Ceiling Zero. Speed, Clint, and Barney, members of the International Secret Police, are in Hong Kong, China, on the trail of the criminal leader, the Octopus. Aiding them are Dr. Kingsley, father of little Jean, and Marsha Winfield, who blames the Octopus for the mysterious disappearance of her brother. Marsha herself is kidnapped by the Octopus gang, and the boys, seeking her whereabouts, raid the smuggling operations of the Octopus on the Siang Dock. They succeed in arresting many of the gang, but fail to prevent Marsha from being carried aboard the flower boat in a large box. The boat starts its return trip up the river, and Clint, after cabling the latest developments of the case to Chief Riley and turning his prisoners over to the Hong Kong police, goes to Dr. Kingsley's home with Speed and Barney. And so you see, Doctor, if Quan Wu hadn't pushed Speed off the pier when he was looking at the box, Speed could have told us that it held Marsha. Yeah, if I'd just fallen into the water, it would have been all right. But I had to hit my head on the float and knock myself out. So by the time I came to, and we could get back to the pier... Miss Marsh had been taken aboard the flower boat. Well, this is terrible, boys. How can we save her? Well, I notified the Hong Kong police when I took in our prisoners a while ago. They're placing a dragnet up and down the river, keeping on the lookout for just such a flower boat. Yeah, Clint, but I don't know how that's going to help. Them flower boats all look alike to me. See one and you've seen all of them. You think they'll hurt Marsha, Barney? Hurt her? Shucks, no, Jane. And you mustn't worry about her. We'll find her. Just you wait and see. I can't help worrying. That octopus is so terrible. I wish I could get to that octopus guy. Well, you may have a chance, Barney. But first, we've got to find Marsha. Oh, uh, I talked to Lee about leaving at dawn, but he advised waiting a few hours. He said that the mist hung over the river until mid-morning. So it'd do no good to go looking for the boat before that. Are you going to fly, Clint? Yes, Jean, in the bullet monoplane that we commandeered from the octopus. Is it in condition? Oh, yeah. I've been keeping an eye on it ever since we landed. We're just going to start ripping out one of them gas tanks so as we could put another seat in. Glad we didn't start the work now until this flight is over. Well, can I go with you, Barney? Maybe Clint ought to stay here in Hong Kong. No, 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 no. Don't start that speed. You're the one who'll stay here in Hong Kong and with Dr. Kingsley. Oh, if he may, Doctor. Why, well, certainly. I welcome this opportunity to entertain a member of the secret police. Well... Clint and me will just be searching the river and them flower boats, kid. But you'll be here taking care of Jean and the doctor. Oh, will you do that, Speed? Will you please? Well, sure, Jean. Don't you worry. I'll take care of you, all right. Well, that's a good boy, Speed. And now you better get off those wet clothes, or Jean will have to be taking care of you. <laughs> well, I'll go back to the Golden Lotus Hotel with Barney and take this Chinese makeup off and try to get a little sleep. And see that you do, too. Yeah, Clint. I wonder if Miss Marsh is doing any sleeping. The octopus must have drugged her to keep her quiet. So she's not worrying about anything right now. Say, Clint... Do you think that Quan Wu was one of the octopus gang? Well, his presence on the dock at the time the slave boat arrived was very suspicious, Speed. Oh, after all, it may have, he just may have been there out of idle curiosity. Yeah, you can't tell. People come down to the docks to see boats come in and out in China just like they do over in the United States, kid. Why, yes, I, uh, I can't imagine Mr. Wu having anything to do with such a gang. He has such a good reputation. He's received everywhere. Well, maybe you're right, Dr. Kingsley. I hope so. Well, anyhow, we'll go back to the Golden Lotus now, and if you get right to bed, Speed, we'll pick you up in the morning if you want to see us take off. Say, I wouldn't miss that for anything, Clint. Can I come too, Clint? Well, sure thing, Jean. That is, if your father says yes. Why, we'll all come to see you off, Clint. I only wish I could do more to end the career of the octopus. <laughs> Silence, men. Your master, the octopus, is speaking. Quan Wu has just contacted me. The flower boat was raided by the International Secret Police. 
Some of our band were arrested. The slaves were freed. Silence. For the first time, a slave transfer has failed. And why? Because my men are cowards. Because they fear the secret police. Because they fear Clint Barlow. If you fear anyone in the world, it must be me, the octopus. Because if you fail to destroy Clint Barlow, Barney Dunlap, and Speed Gibson immediately, then I will destroy you, every one of you. And your destruction will not be speedy nor pleasant. I pay you well as long as you obey orders. And I will give you the orders myself, since Quan Wu has gone on a short trip. The secret police saw him on the Siang Dock tonight. The raid identified them as secret police. And Quan Wu believes it will allay possible suspicion if he removes himself for a little while. And now, members of the Octopus Band, I have just received further word that the secret police have learned that Marsha Winfield was placed aboard the flower boat for the return trip up the Siang River. Tomorrow morning, Clint Barlow and Barney Dunlap are going to fly up the river to look for her. They must never return from that flight. Ming. Yes, master. Proceed to my hangar. Stand ready to follow them in one of the pursuit planes. Take a gunner with you for the machine gun. Master, you mean... I mean that Clint and Barney must never return from their flight up the Siang River. How do you like that bullet plane, Doc? Well, Barney, it certainly looks dangerous. Oh, it is, Daddy. One time when Barney was flying it, the octopus dropped a pin into the controls and sent the plane into a nosedive. The octopus? Radio control, Dr. Kingsley. Barney found the pin in time, though. Lucky for him. I'll say so. You see, it was like this, Doc. I started into a spin through the cloud bank Ah, and... now, while Barney tells you his life's history, Doctor, will you excuse speed me for a few minutes? I'm going to get our clearance papers from the port officials. Well, certainly, Clint. Okay, Gene. Clint, we've already got our clearance papers and everything. Yes, I know, Speed. I wanted to get you alone a second to give you last-minute instructions. Oh, sure. But what do you want me to do? Well, nothing, except on direct orders from me. Oh, Clint, how can I do any good that way? You can do plenty of good, Speed. I want you to keep in touch with Lee Ying, just in case anything should crack open while we're gone, in regard to Marsha. Well, should I go to his tea shop? No. No, I've made arrangements for him to come to the doctor secretly. If anything important should come up. You remember that willow tree in the garden? The one near the wall? Yeah. If he wants to contact you, he'll fasten a paper from one of his tea packages to the branches facing your room window. On it, in code, will be the time you're to meet him and the place. And it'll probably be in the garden itself after dark. We must maintain secrecy because no one, not even the doctor and little Jean, is to know that Lee Ying, the tea merchant, is in the international secret police. Okay, Clint. I've got all that straight. All right. Have you a copy of the code key? Yeah. But I don't need it anymore if you want it. I've memorized the key perfectly. I can decipher any message in code now. Good. Then destroy the code key the minute you're alone. Burn it. That key must not fall into enemy hands. All right. But how can I get word to you if something should happen here, Clint? Well, the doctor has a short wave sending and receiving set speed. And I have the call letters. I'll keep in touch with you by radio telephone. And you, with your knowledge of radio, can answer me. Gee, I didn't know he had a shortwave set. Yes, it's in his study, Speed. It's a hobby of his. And he knows that I'll keep in touch with you that way, so you will not have to ask his permission to use it. In fact, anything concerning actual police work must be sent me with no one else as listening. Yeah, I know. Don't worry, Clint. I'll take care of things back here. Just you and Bonnie take care of yourselves on this flight and come back with Miss Marsha. Uh, we'll do our best, Speed. In the meantime, you're not under any circumstances to leave the doctor's house. Of course, unless under the supervision of Lee Yin. You understand? Yes, sir. Very well. You'd better go back to the others now, or Barney will happen to remember that we've already attended to what we're supposed to be attended to now. Is Barney going to fly the bullet plane? Yeah, at least in the beginning. Then I'll take over the controls when he's tired. Gee, I'd give anything to go with you fellas. I'll have another seat put in that ship the minute we return, Speed. As it is, I don't know what we'll do with Marsha when we find her. Oh, well, I'll worry about that when we find her. Yeah, she can always get hold of another plane. Or maybe she could come back on another flower boat. There's a motor, Clint. And she's probably had enough of flower boats by this time. I found that pin just 
get out of the controls and pull back on the stick hard. Up I zoomed. And then I banked and leveled off for as pretty a landing as you ever see. Is he still talking about his narrow escape, Doctor? Well, it certainly was narrow, Cliff. And the other aviator probably would have failed to bring it out of that dive. Well, to tell you the truth, Doctor, he brought the plane out of the dive, but he's still in one. Yeah. Oh, yeah? What about that time... <laughs> oh, come on, come on, fella. They're warming up our motors. We've got a lot of flying to do. Well, what are we waiting for? I'm ready. It's fine. Good luck, fellas. Well, goodbye. Bye. 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 I do hope they'll come back safe. You need more about them not being safe in the air, Gene. They're both swell aviators. Yes, I imagine they're in more danger on the ground than in the air. Look, the timing is the cockpit now. Uh-huh. But the small plane as that can be brought right up to the float instead of them having to roll out. Goodbye! Goodbye! Happy Bye. landing, fellas! Goodbye! They're turning around now. Heading into the wind. And there they go. If they can only find Marsh. They will, Dr. Kingsley. Clint and Barney can do anything. Hey! What's wrong, Pete? Where did that other plane come from? Look, it's following Clint and Barney. That's probably a government plane, Speed. No, Doctor. It's like the one Barney's flying. Come on, we've got to get to your shortwave set and warn them. That's another octopus plane. <laughs> 